we've chronicled here on the, on the TV show. Uh, six years on my own, I never, I never got anything out of Team Santa Rosa. When the governor's office stepped in, it was swift and immediate, and I appreciate that. And I believe in my heart that Charlie Crist is very, very sincere in his belief that the government is by the people for the people. I think so too. He's 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 had enough experience in, in the various areas of state government that I think I think right. he knows right where the where the pressure points are. You know, as as I've said before, I, you know, all I'm asking for is a transparent government, an accountable government. Yeah. And and my government has a role to make sure that my government is accountable. And, and I just wanted to, of course, he, he already had the email where I outlined him the catch-22. You know, go here, go here, go here, then go here, go here, go here. Nothing gets accomplished except emails flying everywhere. And uh, we, we I, you know, hopefully the right encouragement is, is placed there and, and, and uh, my government will, will fulfill its watchdog role for the citizens. And speaking of watchdog role... Uh, I later had a chance to ask uh, Governor Christ about stimulus money right. coming into the area. I told him that we'd had some some controversial uh, spending, spending habits. Yes, <laughs> I, I said you know government purchases of land that were, were way overvalued, right. uh, some no bid contracts, that kind of thing. And I, he got a little furrow when I you know he looked concerned. I, I think I think he was concerned well, about it. Yeah, you know, and I noticed he was very quick to point out that they they had already set up a website. Yes. To to track that. There's and we'll put it on the screen. There's a website uh, that tracks the, the stimulus money. What I asked him was, is there any route that citizens could take that would bypass the local authorities who may not be enthusiastic about following up, right? And go right to the governor's office and say, hey, we suspect fraud, waste, and abuse with some of this, with some of this stimulus money, with some of this. Um, with some, with some of Obama's money coming in, right. here, here's the problem. Right. And the, that website's, we're putting it up, so right. people so, uh, can contact them. Yeah, and, and look, we all need to be watchdogs. I mean, that, that's, that's part of our roles as citizens. Right. I mean, it, it, it is kind of our job to, uh, to keep them in line. Right. I mean, although certain county commissioners and other people don't appreciate it when you, when you point out a few things to them, it is, it is a citizen's right. You know, as, as Governor Chris pointed out, we the people, you are my boss. It's, he made it very clear. He did. And it's disheartening to think of all of that money pouring in, even perhaps to this area, and just to imagine the many toilets that it may potentially right. be flushed down instead of being used to, well, to improve the economy in you this know, area. I, I am encouraged from the standpoint that I think that there's a lot more people besides you and I that are out there that are that are calling to attention some some boondoggle spending. I know we've seen it in Escambia County, we've seen it in Santa Rosa County, and certainly they're finding a lot of boondoggle spending in Okaloosa County right now. As so. as, as the state attorney over there is um, pulling Mr. Sampson and Mr. Richburg, and 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 certainly that's far from over. There will there will be a. Uh, I envision that they will find a great deal of ridiculous spending over there, but uh, it was very good. Now we also had an opportunity um, a few years back. Uh, we met one of our soldiers who was who was injured in the war, Dustin. Dustin Tuller. Dustin Tuller. We saw him at the meeting. Right, and, the and go ahead and tell the folks what he's up to. Well, he's uh, he was promoting um, the Escarosa Independence Weekend which is um, just a series of events that's going to happen May 14th to 17th. And we're putting the website up on the screen where you can get more information right. on that from. But uh, here's a clip of uh, Dustin himself talking about it a little bit. Well, May 14th to May 16th, we're going to have uh, veterans that are disabled from BAMC, Walter Reed, and uh, I think a couple other facilities. And they're going to be flying in about 300. There'll be a bike ride on May 16th down at Veterans Memorial in Pensacola, mm -hmm. uh, be 25 miles, and uh, be welcome to participate. And the veterans will be out there, they'll also be going to schools, I believe, during the week of the 14th to the 16th. And you're gonna participate as well? Yes, I will. Um, your local veterans will be myself, uh, Robin Griffith, and Janice Amor. Come on out, you know, say hello to the troops, and thank you, or, you know, enjoy the festivities. Uh, 
Deborah and I, and I would like to point out to our viewers that we were one of the first media uh, groups to discuss the stormwater issue. Uh, I, uh, it is my belief that there was um, actually, from a technical standpoint, I believe that the county commissioners were prepared to make a change uh, three weeks ago. But there was a lot of input from a lot of sources of folks that were very nervous about it. Uh, whether for it or against it, there was a great deal of additional input that flowed into our county commission and they decided to put this off. And what they're going to be talking about, and this will be on the county commission meeting 9 a.m. on the 11th, which is this, just this coming Monday. Right. They're going to be discussing weakening stormwater retention standards and permitting standards from a 100-year flood standard down to a 25-year flood right. standard. And, and, you know, look, there's some, some of the arguments for weakening I understand. Now, for example, if you are um, in the Pace area, which has a very thick clay soil, it's not very porous, uh, it has a tendency to hold water, the water will not, it takes a long time for that water to penetrate into the ground. Those holding ponds need to be bigger. Uh, I, I kind of agree with that. I kind of agree with where you have a more, uh, where soil percolates better, you may be able to get away with a smaller Where you're high pond, and dry. Where you're high and dry. Right. But, but my issue in all of this is it seems that it has been working very well. Yes. Certainly, uh, uh, some of our developers have disagreed with it because it increases their cost. But just as we talked about a, a couple shows ago, you know, you're clicking along there and life is good and, 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 and your 18 or 20 neighbors are just happy on this street and there's a big wooded area behind you and a developer buys that area that happens to be slightly elevated above you. and. Uh, as I recall, uh, looking at the weather last night, we've had about 46 inches of rain this year, way over yes. average. Do you as a citizen want to take the risk mm. that lowering those standards to a 25-year uh, flood is going to protect your house? Basically, this will allow more runoff from a given development. And also keep in mind, the standards are already tailored to your particular soil and your particular site. It's not a once you you move not on. A one to, size right, fit all. You right. have X amount of acres, so you have to build a I don't know five million gallon hole. Right. It depends on the soil. That's why they have the county engineers go out and calculate all that stuff. It depends on your site. It may be that if you're very high, very dry, have very sandy soil, it may not be a huge difference between right. a hundred year flood and a 25-year flood, uh, whatever kind of ditch you have to dig, there may not be a huge difference. But if you live in a low area, and there's a lot of, there may be an enormous difference. If right. you live in a low, wet area between a 100-year flood uh, permitting requirement and a 25-year flood permitting requirement, and I have a feeling that's what this is directed at, I think the rumor is, and you've, you've mentioned this, the rumor is some of the Obama stimulus money is going to go towards widening Avalon Boulevard. Right. Once that happens, we've also seen a weakening that just this year, just this last legislative session on growth management law. The state no longer oversees what they used to on local developments. Right. They have they have weakened the laws, and and actually I saw one email that said if anybody is trying to do anything that will help us economically, right, permit it and let's get get on with it. I think we're looking at a free for all exactly. in, the, in the Avalon Peninsula which is uh, a natural resource in Santa Rosa County that's covered it is, it in wetlands. It is a huge wetland area. It is covered in wetlands. Those wetlands buffer the higher, the higher elevations and, and, the, and the more northerly uh, properties against the hurricanes and other right. stuff like that.